Well, it's time to talk accessibility. You know, we love that on the No Silica Cast. And we're at the American Printing House right now, and I'm with Craig Medor and Dave Wilkinson of the American Printing House. How are you guys doing? We're doing very well. All right, hot dogs. Well, let's start out. What are you going to show us here first, Greg? Well, probably the two big items we're showing this year. Uh, one is a partner project. This is called the Canute. It's from Bristol Braille, which they're actually out of Wales. And this is the first multi-line Braille display ever invented. And okay, so for those who are not blind and haven't used a Braille display, the largest displays before were 40 cells, 40 cells. is that right? So 40 could, cells is 40, 40 characters. 40 characters, but you were spreading your arms way out. Yes. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> So, so it seems for for our world this is revolutionary in the sense, but it's it's kind of a, a sad commentary too that this is the the first time a Braille user would have access to almost the full page of Braille. So what what we're looking at here looks like it's one two three four looks like eight or nine it's nine like eight rows or nine lines. eight or nine, nine lines of a bunch this of little nine. dots coming up and going down showing the the alphabet across there right. Yes. This is actually a part and, and this is part of a book. Uh, that we loaded in here on a, on a USB drive. I'm reading upside down and I'm doing it very badly. Uh, this is... Oh, that's oriented for us. Yeah, this is already oriented for you. This is called the, uh, the Nordic... Oh, this is all about the, uh, the Nordic coast. So it's all about the, the coast. It's an article about the coast of Norway. And then okay, so I'm that's really, let's, let's be blind and read upside down. Let's go for the, <laughs> can you do a handstand while you do it there, Dave? I absolutely could. Uh, and then if I hit this little, the forward button here, now I'm going to the next screen. And what makes this really, it really incredible is Braille technology has been super expensive. I've got a little note-taking device over my shoulder here that's about a $3,000 device that has 20 cells of Braille, which looks cute and it's wonderful and it's small, but it's ridiculously expensive. This guy, we're looking at a price tag of under $2,000 for nine lines of Braille, 40 cells across, which is just insane. Now, my understanding was always that the difficulty in making these less expensive was the, the accuracy required to pop those little cells up and down, but this has each, each cell appears to have like two I don't know, two rotating pieces that are coming up and That's down, right. is that right? That's right. It's got little wheels that are, I'm sorry, I just wrapped, it's got two little wheels that are zooming around and, and bringing the dots up on each side of the cell. So you've got... So it doesn't have to be accurate with each pin. That's correct. Uh, That's it, correct. It's still accurate, but it's a different right. technology. But, it doesn't, it doesn't, but what she's saying is you don't have to have all the little right. pins pop up. Right. Yeah. So the machining and, and mechanism isn't as complicated because you're bringing this wheel around. That's right. The wow. algorithm that goes behind the math is intense to make sure you have accurate braille, which is beyond my my scope of intelligence, but the so, folks in Bristol have done a great can job. Can we turn the page again, and I'm gonna hold the mic, not to you, but to the page so we can hear it. And you'll notice that it's refreshing from the top down, so that even though the refresh rate is an instant, meaning that the, page, the pen's coming up, you can start reading at the top, and then it keeps ahead of you as you're going towards the bottom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that noise you heard was the little rotating things flipping into place line by line by line. Well, that's pretty terrific. All right, what's the next thing we're going to take a look at, Greg? next thing we're going to talk about is, and th we actually showed this last year, but we've made several improvements. This is the Graffiti. It's a product, uh, partner product with uh, Orbit Research. This is the world's first multi-level tactile tablet. Again, seems amazing in this day and age, 2018, that this has never been done before. So let me describe to, to the audience what we're looking at is it's a grid of, of dots and they're at, they're at differing heights. They look like they're kind of all at the same this height here. Is a, this is a, yeah, this is a, a, a low grade image and they are all at the same height. I think this is one of Stevie's album covers. Um, oh, because that's the CES logo. Sorry. So maybe we could switch to another one. We can see it go. So we get a different filter here. All right. So he's pushing a button here. The, all the oh, dots now we're going. getting now we're getting cool. Look at so now I've got different heights that are representing the darkness and the light and the the the, the higher the dot, the, the the darker the color for the CES. Oh, logo I here. see. Yeah. So I can see the the uh, background of the of the logo, yeah. not just the letters. That's exactly right. Maybe and so I can. Your hands back for a second there. Yeah. Let's yes. make sure all the sighted people see That's what the right. blind guy's yeah. looking at, right? <laughs> We've got to have accessibility for the sighted people. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, actually, I think it's the other way around, Dave. The the, the high stuff might be the light. Well, actually, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't. Our CES badge we'll have to there. look at our badge. There we go. Actually, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It's the contrast. It's the contrast you're looking at. Exactly. So we're looking at. You said this is more like a 16-bit image. It's more of a 16-bit image, which is uh, again ha has not been done before. So it's we would. The, the nice thing about this is this is foundational in the sense is we're hoping a, a lot of what APH does 
is we introduce technology, brilliance. It is the American Printing American House. Printing House for the Blind. We introduce these ideas with the hope that this is going to inspire somebody, some company somewhere to say, I can do it better, faster, cheaper, and take this idea and technology to the next level. Because we're okay. a nonprofit, so this is like a reference design kind this of thing. This is a, this is a foundation. This will be a, a foundational piece that hopefully, ten years from now, fifteen years from now, everyone will say this was this was a seminal piece of of uh, technology these ideas that, that got the next thing that going. got us moving to the next level. Yes. Now I asked you beforehand before we started recording, what was the one thing you'd like people to take away from what they hear today? Can you repeat what you said? Yeah, I, I think it's this idea of. of Accessibility needs to be built in from the front end. And so much of what we do, and it's part of what we've done for 160 years, is fixing that that piece. It's like, whether it be uh, print, moving print to Braille, or whether it be creating educational products that are available to a student who is blind or visually impaired, or technology is creating fixes for the industry because they didn't think about intelligent design or universal design on the front end. It seems like that that's starting to shift. It is um, shifting some, and you know that it. Well, we're very excited by all the work that the big major companies are doing right now, where they're really putting a lot of attention to accessibility. Um, the one thing we would continue to encourage them is to broaden their idea base and and really reach out to the experts, reach out to people who are blind and visually impaired, and really create a strong, robust, not just testing, because they do good with, job with testing, but a strong, robust field of designers who are blind or visually impaired, so you're getting it right from the beginning. Well, it's sort of like uh, having a diverse workforce in, in race, creed, culture, and accessibility as well, Absolutely. right? Because you can't really b understand innately what the world is like unless you are blind, right? Ab absolutely. And, and the one thing I would add to what Craig says is that the, uh, there, there's a myth out there that, that, that Braille is dead or dying, and that Braille, Braille is not dead or dying. With something like the graffiti, I can take an image from my cell phone and instantly have it put on to, to, to raise line drawings so that I can see what I'm looking at. Uh, the, the, the possibilities with Braille are astounding, and so as we're moving forward, uh, it's sort of my, my soapbox would be that the audio is not, is, is not the same as Braille. Uh, and Braille it, it has, has amazing, outstanding potential with the lower cost Braille cells that are being produced. And one that's of one things, of the things that really excites me. One of the things I think about with Braille versus audio is uh, when you read as a sighted person, you have a different experience than when someone reads yes. to you. Well, because your imagination builds what is that world, you, you can see it in your head what's going on. I would think the same thing would be true with Braille. Absolutely. Not to mention the fact that an audio, when you're listening, it's a passive experience. You're just sitting there. or you're. You, and we're, we're, when you're reading, whether it's you're looking at a piece of paper or you're running your fingers over a piece of paper, you're actively involved in the experience that's taking place. So it's it's a more active. It, it, it's an, it, reading is an active participation sport. Whereas when you're listening to it, you can just be sitting there thinking about your dishes. Yeah, exactly. And aren't we all? All right. Well, if people want to learn more about the work that you're doing here, where would they go? Well, they can come to our booth here at CES if they're here. Uh, we'd love to see them and say hi and show them what we have. If not, they can come out to our website, www.aph.org. And uh, we will have, it's a, a website that will take you days to get through because the amount of information that is there about products as well as about the field in general. So it's a lot right. of information. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for you t taking the time to talk to us Thank today. You, Thank you, Allison.